and spend the rest of the day getting drunk, Sabre. <laughs> Excellent. Good plan. Like, irresponsible amounts of drinking. <laughs> and it, as a consequence, uh, the meeting that you had scheduled for the next day early in the morning is a nightmare. <laughs> you two barely drag yourselves out of bed to the big meeting of the Lucerne where everyone everyone is present and it's the Lucerne is getting really big like it's getting really hard to ignore how substantial the Lucerne has gotten now you've got obviously Dorian and May you've got Talgan you've got the three player characters uh, Yariel Elian Cassandra you've got Fenris you've got Hawk the champion of Kirkwall you've got Ren and Zevrin like it's you've got a pretty substantial crew now mm. Uh, and you all are seated down at the official meeting table, and uh, Dorian says, Okay, so, first of all, he goes over to, like, you, Lennon and Sabra, and he, like, bangs a pot by your faces. Lennon's <laughs> <laughs> is like, stop! Dorian, stop! I'm sorry! You're as bad as Ren. Jesus Christ. Ren's like, you deserve it. <laughs> I give him the double, like, middle fingers from across the table. <laughs> Dorian says, okay, anyway, as I was saying. <clears throat> so, a couple things that we need to discuss. We need to, of course, talk about Ferelden. Uh, and subsequently, we also need to talk about Orzammar, since it sounds like the hesitant plan is to go straight from Ferelden into Orzammar, since they're right next door to each other. And he says, okay, so um, we need to discuss who we are going to bring with us to Ferelden. Uh, I would advise keeping it small. You don't want to bring too many people to court. Even if it is Ferelden, it's still, like, a royal court. And it can get messy in any royal court. So let's have a little think about who we're taking with us to Ferelden. The character select screen pops up as well. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, obviously he's not going to be, like, a battle character, but we should probably bring Ren, right? Because... Yeah, because he Ren knows Alistair. So. knows Alistair. Yeah, yeah. that feels like, like mm -hmm. the, we have to bring him, because he's, like, our way in. Yes. But for, uh, for any misadventures that pop up... Uh, who would you like to bring? I feel like we should bring Talgan, mostly because now yeah. I, I saw his backstory, I'm like, I want to know what's going on. Right, exactly. Kaz is just like, well, I mean, Talgan's a good fighter. <laughs> Talgan's like, you want me to come with you to Ferelden? Why not? He, like, narrows his eyes because it's suspiciously close to Orzammar. Uh-huh. Is it? I didn't know that. <laughs> no one knew that. <laughs> he says... I mean, I'll go if you want me to, but I must remind you, once again, that my family, the noble name, House Dunmoral, is dissolved. It does not exist. I am the last living heir and I am a surfacer, therefore I am incapable of inheriting. So I really don't think I'll be of any use in Orzammar. You'll be great in Ferelden, though. I, like, pat him on the back. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's the point. The point, Talgan, is that you are good at you are an excellent fighter, and that's what we need. Should things go wrong, and I feel like they will. God, you're all so full of shit. He says, <laughs> like he sees right through this. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, fine, I'll come with you to Ferelden, where they you know they eat snails in Ferelden. What? They're so small. Why the crunchy shell? What? You you don't crunch the shell. <laughs> He says, no, you take them out of the shell and then you roast them like some sort of heathen, Talgan says. Who eats snails? Who looks at a snail and thinks delicious? Shem, I mutter myself disparagingly. Elian just tries to look innocent. <laughs> yeah. Cass just like nods like with the Ariel, like, yeah, that sounds like human bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and Dorian says, okay, so Talgan it is uh, going to Ferelden. And he says, okay, and now uh, I have another piece of news. And he's like, he's been, uh, barely reining in like there's something very exciting he wants to talk about and like he's finally getting around to it he's like he's got the boring boring political bullshit out of the way he's like okay yes Talgan is going to Ferelden okay so and then he like leans forward over the table and he says I have great news what is it Dorian by all means yeah share for the past couple of months uh Bavaris and I have been working kind of on the down low because we didn't want to tell anyone just in case it kind of fell through but we've been working on what we've termed project respite and it has finally gone into successful operation. He says, I am so excited to show you guys this. Come with me. Uh, and he says, anyone who wants to come see the coolest thing we've ever made, or whatever, I guess, just come with me. <laughs> and uh, he hurries off happily. Like He's just, oh, he's so excited. He like scurries down to the basement. I exchange a look with Lannon, and I'm like, should we go? Lannon's like, I mean, I'm curious. 
uh, May is about as excited as she can be. She's mostly just tired. She's 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 kind of sick, uh, so she's been dealing with that. But so Dorian heads. Uh, he goes to the, the secret slave haven. You know the fifteen locks and like behind a bookshelf, and you have to <laughs> twist the book just this way to get it to open. And he goes inside, and what is immediately apparent is there is a lot fewer slaves than yeah. last time. Uh, and he says, I am so excited that we finally managed to get this to work, he says, as you all, which is the three player characters, Lannan and Ren are coming, and who else would come? I think Talcon probably already knows about it. It was a security thing, so he's already aware. Uh, yeah, that's probably it. Uh, Dorian and Mayveris and Lannan and Ren. Um, uh, he says, we finally got this to work after many months of experimentation. I am so excited uh and he heads through to like the uh big washroom you were in you've been in there before back in the way way early like the first episode yes in the big communal (laughs) washroom Mm -hmm. and it looks pretty much the same except there is a very large mirror on one wall Mm. and he says i managed to do it i managed to replicate an alluvian successfully he says and he heads up to it uh and he says respite and the mirror shimmers and he steps through Oh, wow. Okay. That's a lot. Elian still doesn't like these magic mirrors, but yeah, I'll check it out. Uh, Mavera steps through after him and everyone else, it sounds like, follows. Yep. Uh, it takes you through a different part of the crossroads. Like, uh, it is in a different area. It's it's not quite as elaborate. Like, the one that you went through in uh, to get between Kirkwall and Minrathis was something that was ancient. It was already extant. That you were just borrowing from the ancient elves. So it was very grand. It was very elegant. This is like, Dorian clearly made this. <laughs> he, It's literally just a hallway. It's a hallway and the sky looks gray. Like, it doesn't look like the fancy stained glass sky that you're used to. Uh, it, it's just another mirror that goes down the hallway. And he's it's the same pastor and he steps through. Uh, and you all follow him and you step through into a small building, like a small wooden building. And the walls are really thin and you can hear the sea outside. There's a small dirty window and he goes, he immediately like barges, like as soon as he's through, he like barges through the door and he throws it open and he says, welcome, welcome to respite. And what you are standing in is a small village like it's a full village there's like a couple houses dotted along uh what looks like it's like a small coastal town maybe like a fishing village it is backed right up against this huge cliff uh which puts it in a very like secret kind of spot like it's right at the foot of this enormous cliff so unless you're along the edge of the cliff you're not going to see it and he says, we found this abandoned fishing village. I should mention, right now we are right near the border between Navarra and Tevinter, a sort of political no man's land. Uh, we managed to keep our discovery of it very quiet. And we managed to replicate an alluvian that can take us through between here and uh, the Pavis estate. And he says, this is what we've been trying to do from the start. He says, There are so many slaves that we managed to free who just don't have anywhere to go. They don't have any family that they could return to. They don't have a home they can go back and find. And so we made them one. He said, this is Respite. And you realize he's talking like, this is the name of the village. The name of the village is Respite. And now that you're looking around, like it's very sparsely populated, but there are a bunch of elves like crisscrossing uh, across the street. You can see one woman bringing two large buckets of water from a well nearby. You're guessing there's a small, a very small inn uh, with a door open and there's a hearth burning inside. Like it's small and it's very sparsely populated, but it's a real town. Yeah. I feel like Cass gets like the wind of excitement, like, Wow, wow, Dorian and May, this is amazing. Dorian is like vibrating with excitement. He's like, I know, right? Oh my god. And I poured so much of Pavis money into this to to fix the infrastructure because it had been abandoned for many years. But we've we've really fixed it up and this is sustainable. Like the money they make uh from from catching fish is more than enough to sustain them indefinitely. I'm like begrudgingly like respectful. Like this is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is magic shit, but I guess it's fine. <laughs> it's a shame they have to go through a stupid magic door, but this is this is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, Lannan's also pretty impressed. He says, "Wow, Dorian, this is I can't believe you made an entire village. <laughs> this is pretty great. It's impressive. I feel like Elliot is just like 
automatically looking for like, okay, how hidden is it? Are they really safe here? Like, <laughs> not finding fault. Uh, like, strategically, it's at a pretty good location. Like, they are right, like, literally back. There are some buildings that are backed up against this huge 200, 300 foot cliff, which makes it very difficult to see unless you're down on their level. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's this cliff, a sheer drop, and then maybe two or three miles until you hit the ocean. Yeah. The nearest path leading up is about three or four miles down. And Dorian is explaining this to you as he's, like, walking you through time. He's like, and if you go two or three miles down that way, uh, you'll eventually get to a path that will lead you back up the cliffs, and you'll be in extreme northern Navarra. And he says, but all in all, it's pretty secluded. It's pretty defensible. And it is not quite to Vinter and not quite Navarra, which means that neither the Imperium nor the Navarran royal family technically own it, which I think is most useful. It's, it's impressive, Dorian. He is like, he is so excited. Like, obviously, this has been his baby for several months now. <laughs> yeah. Like, and it's, ah, I finally got it to work. And I am so excited. This is going to help so many people. I am thrilled beyond belief. And... If you have any you know, friends who are trying to escape slavery, or even if you yourself might need a home to go after this is all over, and he's like looking at you, Cassandra, specifically. Oh. It's like, if you need a permanent home, takes all kinds here in Respite, right? That, you can see like on her face, that was not even something that she had ever thought about. And she was like, oh, a home. Yes, of course. He says, it would take a little bit of investment, but we could certainly make you a little house of your own. Wow. Yeah. Having things of her own is still, mm, that's, that's a thing she's going to have to get used to. Like, what? <laughs> is this the part of the game where you could spend your hard-earned coin to get yourself, like, a stove? <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yes, this is the uh, Dragon Age for the Sims. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Well, Yario would be able to be get the best house because he hasn't spent any of his money because he doesn't know he has money. <laughs> he doesn't know what a bank account is. <laughs> it's fine. Basically, we've been living at everyone else's charity for so long. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like sort of say like aside to Lennon, I'm just like this is actually pretty cool. <laughs> Lennon says, "Yeah, I mean, that's this is the reason why I uh, was so eager to have him in the inner circle of the Inquisition." Dorian does not do things by halves. No, he doesn't seem entirely capable of that. <laughs> he says, you know, after my clan died, he was the only person, the only one who, and he, he's like smiling very fondly at Dorian. He says, he is a, he's a good man. And I'm glad that he's in charge of the Lucerne. I, I clap him on the back and I'm like, well, he seems decent enough, except for his irrational hatred of me. <laughs> he says, yeah, he's very, um, he's very protective of his friends. It's because he doesn't have very many, you understand. Well, it certainly doesn't seem like that now, does it? And I sort of, like, gesture widely around. Yeah, I don't think he's realized it yet, though. I don't think he's realized how many friends he has now. He's still operating like he has to fight to defend every single one he has with tooth and nail. He's not used to not having to defend himself. Yeah, I know where he comes from. And I'll take anybody who could uh, keep an extra eye on you. <laughs> and I sort of just, like, give him a look. He's like, I'm perfectly capable of defending myself, he says, like he doesn't realize what a dumbass he is. I roll my <laughs> eyes at him. <laughs> I am a perfectly competent mage. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go find Ren. <laughs> and I just stalk <laughs> off. Uh, so you you head off leaving Lennon standing behind. He's like, I don't understand. I am a very competent mage. I killed Corypheus. <laughs> it was fine. Uh, you go off to find Ren. Ren is standing... Uh, by the edge of the sea, kind of staring. He has a strange look on his face. He's staring into uh, into the Notion Sea. His eyes are sort of glazed over. I walk up to him and punch him really hard in the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> he staggers a bit and he blinks heavily and looks back at you. He says, there's... there." I say, what, you're not going to try to punch me back? What's... Are you okay? I, like, go up and, like, feel his forehead. <laughs> there's... There's Darkspawn. What? what? There's dark spawn. There's dark spawn near. What? They're getting closer. He says, "I'm a gray warden. I can sense dark spawn. They're coming from, I, I think, from the south." And I think I shout and I'm like, "Dark spawn! Everyone, take cover!" Dory says, "What?" And then you hear, "Shit! What? Where are they coming from?" Ren immediately starts. He, uh, 
Okay, let me ask you. Let me ask it like this: Would you have trusted Ren to have a bow at this point, Sabrae? Yeah, I think so. He's he got married. He's been walking around like <laughs> right. He seems like he's been doing pretty well, actually. Okay. All right. He uh, pulls a bow off his back, and he immediately starts running south. He's like, "We need to start evacuating everyone. This thing, this city doesn't have a wall. This city doesn't have anything. We need to start." And then uh, you see, uh, there's a huge crash from about half a mile away and a large chunk of rock of the cliffside falls over and a couple figures start staggering out oh shit 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 no i think i like i stop and i uh i turn to ren and i'm like ask tell them to start getting people through the mirror now no i can fight send me to evacuate she's the one who's fragile i can fight let me fight are you sure? You don't- I'm a great warden! You need me! Oh, God. Just you don't die! Wrong. And I punch him again, and I go running for to find May. <laughs> uh, he immediately pulls a, an arrow out, and he says, Come on, they're this way! <laughs> May is already in, like- She's already trying to raise the alarm. Mm -hmm. She's like, okay, everyone, if we can all just evacuate, please. <laughs> Try to get as, <laughs> as far away from the city as possible. I, like, run in front, and I think I, like, skid to a stop a little bit in front of her. And I'm like, the mirror. <sighs> just yes, yes, the mirror. Good idea. She says, okay, everyone, into this room, please, if you don't mind. <laughs> like, the most courteous evacuation you've ever heard. Right. <laughs> I think seeing that, I'm like, it's like, she's got it under control. And I, I like, I go to make a run back, like, getting everybody I can find to come with me who can fight. You arrive just in time to see Ren uh, fire a bow, and I would like everyone to roll initiative. Oh, boy. Excellent. So, Sabre, you run up into the crowd. You, when you first saw the dark spawn they were about like a mile down the coast like you could only barely make them out they have gained on you alarmingly quickly like you were only gone to tell me to evacuate them for like maybe two minutes and when you come back they are already nearly within melee range jesus whoa oh, lovely. and there's a lot of them in fact uh there are five very large hurlocks oh no <sighs> And Ren just fired off a round, so I will go ahead and have him roll to hit. He has extremely... Oh, God. <laughs> uh, I forgot how good he is at this. <laughs> <laughs> he is the hero for all the... Also, he's... I regret... A Grey I Warden. regret this. He's got, like, <laughs> good... Like, he's made specifically for fighting these. A plus 12 with bows. Come oh, my God. God. <laughs> all right. Plus 12. Yeah, 26 is a hit. I guess I don't regret not sending him home. <laughs> right? And he's got five stunt points. Oh, God. Wow. This, this, get, this herlock is about to fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> you can unleash a storming missile. You can perform the volley stunt for five spell points. Okay, I guess that's what he's doing. This allows you to make two more ranged attacks at the same target or at others in sight within... Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, uh, so that's a total of... Three attacks against this one Genlock. Alright, uh, he hits the Hurlock with three arrows in extremely rapid succession. Damn. Once in the eye, twice in the chest. And that is the only action that he gets. Sabre, you are up after him. Like, <laughs> staring in awe. Like, <laughs> this is not the boy I grew up hunting with. <laughs> he has gotten extremely good at killing Darkspawn in the interim. <laughs> I guess so. Sure has. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna pull out uh, Virsuladin <laughs> because why the fuck not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Here's your sword. Hope you didn't want it back. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna activate Spirit Warrior as I do that, and I'm just going to hit them with a sword. The one that Ren just shot, or a different one? Um, yeah, one at a time here. <laughs> you swing down on it with Virsuladin, and the uh, Herlock catches. Uh, your blow on his axe and spins it away. Is there anything you can do with those stunt points? Yeah, that's what I was looking at. Wait one second. Oh yeah, I'm going to do this. Um, I'm dual wielding, so Ooh. I'm going to use the lightning attack, which I have a stunt bonus that lets me do it for two stunt points instead of three. So yeah. I'm going to make nice. another attack. <laughs> do it. So this one, I guess, is with my spear, because that's my other hand. A 14 is a hit. Oh, All damage. Sweet. 12 damage minus 5 is 7 damage. It's not nothing. 
All right. Next up in the order is Cassandra. Right. I'm going to activate combat magic. <laughs> I still like how you have not made any effort. Like, it's literally just an ingot that your sword comes out of. Like, it, you can, I would like to remind you, you can have this shaped into an actual hilt at any point. Oh, okay. Yes, I do want that to happen. <laughs> At some point, yes. You've just been swinging around an ingot. Although I do like the image of Kisana just not realizing, oh, I can use make a real hilt from it? <laughs> yeah, we need to... Can I shape it, like, in combat, or does that have to be out of combat? Oh, no, it has to... You have to take it to a blacksmith. Like, yeah, okay, that's shaped. something we're gonna do, yeah, uh, very soon. <laughs> so, combat magic, just because um, I can use my magic instead of strength for shit, and I like that. I think the elves have got that one. I'm gonna go for another one. <laughs> and then I'll use... Crushing prison on um, the one that's, I guess, advancing towards us. They're all advancing toward you, babe. Yeah. I mean, the one that's closest to me that's not one that's being attacked. Anyway. Okay. Herlock 2. Herlock, Herlock 2. There we go. We'll go with that. Okay. So it's a spirit attack. A 13. That is a hit. So he needs to make a con stamina test against something? Yep. Against my spell power. Yep. Which is 10 plus your spirit score, right? Mm-hmm. Which is what, 15? Yep, 15, correct. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Nope! Ho, ho, ho. Crushing prison is successful. You have successfully <laughs> crushed prison. All right. You'll have to remind me of what that does. Um, it immediately deals 1d6 plus 3, so let me do that. Four damage. And then if it fails, it becomes immobilized. They cannot move, they cannot make attacks or cast spells. Okay, awesome. And then an additional 2d6 plus 3 at the start of the next turn, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Oh, awesome. Very Woohoo! good. So Cassandra lights up her lightsaber and then extends her free hand to crush this one herlock, like stop him in midair. <laughs> I actually really like the image. Like you can picture like, so Ren like fires off three arrows faster than you can even fucking perceive. <laughs> and then Sabre races forward after he's done what his first blow get knocks away and his second blow with the spear goes up into the gut of the herlock. And then Cassandra races up beside him and crushes the second herlock in the prison of magic. Oh, that's awesome. That's it's, rad as hell. Yeah, it's exactly. I love that image. <laughs> Elian, you're up. Um, so I feel like, you know, Elian rushed up with sword in hand and all of that. But I feel like he just starts to um, starts to chant, you know, starts to focus what he's doing. Many are those who wander in sin, despairing that they are lost forever. The one who repents, who has faith unshaken by the darkness of the world, boasts not nor gloats over the misfortunes of the weak, but takes delight in the Maker's laws and creations. She shall know the peace of the Maker's benediction. The light shall lead her safely. Nice! He's just going to continue this as we go on. All right, and what does that do mechanically? Uh, mechanically, you get a plus one on your attack rolls. Anyone who is within 12 yards man is an ally. And is that a major action? It's a major action to start, and then I can maintain it with a free action on subsequent rounds. Nice. That's a free plus one on uh, on all your attack rolls, friends. Woohoo! You're welcome. All right. Uh, it is Ren's turn. He had the one action. He's going to do that thing he did before. He's going to fire another arrow. Plus his modifier of 12. 18 is a hit. <laughs> At least he doesn't have any stun points. I like that points. you get exasperated at your own characters for being right. OP. Like, I did, we didn't even do this. I really should have thought this through better. This is all mine. This is all me, babes. <laughs> okay, so it's 1d6 plus 3 plus his perception. 10 damage minus 5, so he does another 5 damage to the first herlock. This one hits, him in, hits the herlock in the mouth, and it sort of Ooh. spits black blood. And as soon as he sees that, and like, you're really, really close to this herlock, Sabre. And so you hear him frantically say, keep your mouth closed! Let the lad keep your mouth closed! Don't swallow any of the blood! Okay. What did I just say? I said, keep your mouth closed, you idiot! <laughs> <laughs> Don't reply! <laughs> <laughs> Throw my hands exasperatedly up in the air. Oh, right, it is herlock one. Uh, herlock one's turn. He is going to go straight for you, Sabre, because you're yep. a big juicy tank and you're right in front of him. Yep. Uh, well, you're a tank. You're a big. <laughs> yeah. Small juicy tank. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, you're an elf. You're a little twink. Or a twunk? I think you're more like a twunk. No, for, like, Lannan knows that you are a twunk, because he's an elf. Like, he knows what a buff elf looks like. Everyone else thinks you are a twink. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a two-handed sword. He's going to go at you with a two-handed sword, plus six to hit. What's your defense score? Thirteen. That is a hit. Uh, you're going to take 3d6 plus 4 minus your armor rating. 
So 18 minus your armor rating. Uh, minus four. Okay, so... 14 damage total. Uh, Herlock, too. He is in the crushing prison. So read to me what damage he takes, Cassandra? Or what's supposed to happen? Additional 2d6 plus three at the start of their next turn. And they have to pass another stamina or strength might te- check versus my spell power to break free. All right, we'll go ahead and roll uh, the damage first. And that's penetrating damage. Oof. And now he has to make a con stamina test, you said? Yeah, either con stamina or strength might versus my 15 spell power. He's got a better strength. He's got plus three, so we'll go plus three strength. Oh, that is, yeah, 15 is my spell power. So yeah, that's exactly the same. Okay, so he breaks free. He's no longer in crushing prison. Her luck three. He is going to also take a bite out of you, Sabre. You're right there. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, your your ace your defense is fourteen, right? Uh, my defense is thirteen. <laughs> is thirteen? Yeah. So that is a th- fourteen minus whatever so your 10. defense yeah. is. <laughs> well, I'm getting the shit big kicked out of me here. Well, that's fine because Herlock Four is gonna go after Cassandra. <laughs> okay. I was waiting for it with a short sword. A fifteen, I assume, is a hit, Cassandra. Uh, yeah, for sure. Fourteen minus whatever your armor score is, which I think is zero, Cassandra. Uh, right now it's three. It's three? Okay, so eleven. You take eleven damage. Okay. Herlock five is going to do the exact same thing. Actually, Herlock five is going to go after Elian. You're also within melee range. <laughs> uh, Nineteen, I assume, hits you, Elian? <sighs> yeah. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Six plus four damage. Thirteen minus your armor score. Okay, so that's ten damage. Okay, Lannan is up next. Lennon, uh, he has a one die penalty to every spell he casts, which is going to be interesting. Mm. Because he has very good modifiers, but that's a one die penalty, which is quite a lot. So he's going to use... I guess he'll use Chain Lightning, which is a primal. Ooh. It's a, it's a pretty high TN, but he has a very, very good score in primal. He's got a plus nine in primal. So 2d6 plus nine. A 12 is a hit! All right. So he has hit the first target, which means that it can jump to up to five secondary targets of your choice within 10 yards of the primary target. You must pay three MP for each target beyond the first. So he's going to hit all of them. Uh, The primary target suffers 3d6 plus magic penetrating damage, while the secondary targets suffer 2d6 plus magic penetrating damage. So the first target takes 3d6 plus magic, and his magic score is seven. His magic score is seven. (laughs) So the first one takes 21 points. <laughs> oh, this is a mistake. <laughs> You're like, I have made an okay, error. Okay, it's not, it's not dead. Herlock 3 is not dead. It's just, okay. It's just very close. To, it's just very <laughs> close to dead. Right, just so close. Uh, Herlock 1 is dead, though. Ah, oh, shit. Um, <laughs> Herlock 2 is significantly wounded. Uh, the other ones have... Okay, well, this was a bad decision. I should not have done this. Okay, Dorian's up next. Uh, Dorian, uh, who's used to Lennon's OP bullshit. Uh, Dorian is going to cast Walking Bomb. Woohoo! God. So that's plus seven. That is a 20 with six stuns. Dorian! Wow! Oh. <laughs> He's like, no, I just fucking made this place, I will defend it! Alright, um, the, on the round you cast it, the bomb inflicts 1d6 penetrating damage. Should the spell's damage reduce the health to zero, they explode in a spray of blood, fresh and flesh, and bones. God. Anyone within four yards of the exploding victim takes 2d6 damage. Okay, so this her- this Herlock is about to fucking die. Yep. Because uh, 1d6 plus 1 penetrating damage. That's just enough to kill Herlock 2, which means it explodes, and everyone, that includes, like, Sabre. Oh, and boy. And Kasanda and Elian takes oh, 2d6 no. penetrating damage. Oh, God. Oh, God. That's nine damage. Sorry, he says. <laughs> you all take nine penetrating damage, but the Herlock is dead. I'm getting the shit beat out of me. <laughs> Herlock right? three is also dead. Herlock four and five are the only ones remaining. I, I want to shout, but I can't. But I'm like, he's fucking doing this on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Sabre, those OP mages uh, just fucking absolutely obliterated three of the five Herlocks in front of you. <laughs> There's only two of them left, and they don't look great. <laughs> I think, like, I'm trying to summon judgment, but I can't, because I'm just like, this is like the, like, clearly we're gonna win, so. 
<laughs> like, I can't be outraged enough to actually summon. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, like, sigh and go after, uh, I don't know, just pick a random one and go after it with uh, the sword again. Go ahead and roll to hit. You are trying to hit a 12. A 14 is a hit, and you've got two stunts. Awesome. Actually, I'm just gonna do the same thing as last time, so I'm gonna do uh, two hits. 10 damage minus 5 is 4. And then I'm rolling for my second offhand. A 12 is a hit. Go ahead and roll damage. 15 minus 5 is 10. Yes, you kill the fourth Herlock. Nice! Yay. I actually did something. Uh, Cassandra, there's only one Herlock left. Gonna cast lightning. A 16 is a hit. No stunt points, but go ahead and roll damage or whatever. Does it need to make a contest or anything? Uh, yes, it is a con stamina versus my spell power. A 10, I am guessing, is not good enough, so go ahead and roll damage, full damage. 8 damage, and that's penetrating. Uh, it's not quite dead. It's really getting close, though. It's really getting close. Okay. So this herlock is on its last legs, Elian, when it comes to be your turn. And you are turning, and you are about to lay some sort of killing blow when this cliff wall, though suddenly explodes, and an enormous ogre comes barreling no! out. No! Oh, what? no! Ogres are about 12 feet tall, with huge curling horns. Frankly, a little too big. Like, compensating for something, probably, yeah. but also, it's gonna rip all of you in half. Ooh, don't like this. The ogre has joined the initiative order, uh, and it, ha it is going right after you, Elian, and it is right next to you. Jesus. Oh my shit. Oh god. That would be a good time to say a prayer to Andraste. Shut <laughs> <laughs> no fucking shit. <laughs> because you are not a twonk, you are actually a twink. Like, for real. <laughs> <laughs> Break you in half. <laughs> the light shall lead her safely through the past of this world into the next. For she who trusts in the maker, fire is her water. As the moth sees light and goes toward flame, she should see fire and go towards light. The ogre leans down and roars at you. Oh my fucking <laughs> god. So, real talk. Should I attack? Should I flee? What the fuck should I do with this thing? For those who believe in the maker, fire is her water. Oh, never mind. I give up. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I see your point. All right, Andreste. I'm just, I'll see you later. Peace. Now, I feel like he already had his rapier out. He is going to just react and slice at it before he tries to run. Like, its defense is only 11, presumably, because it's not very hard to hit. It's enormous. <laughs> A 13 is a hit. You have three stunt points. Yes. Go ahead and roll. Woo! Yeah, I'll do Mighty Blow, so that's an extra 1d6. Hey, it has 69 health left. Nice. Oh, <laughs> so I run the nice. fuck away. <laughs> the ogre is up next. Uh, oh, you run away, and the ogre, like, it didn't even fucking feel your rapier. Like, yeah. it has 80 hit points. You, like, slashed at its leg a little bit. Yeah. Uh, it picks up a rock and hurls it at Dorian. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> and this is a huge fucking rock. What's Dorian's defense score? Let's find out together. 16. <laughs> Dorian's defense is 10. <laughs> so <laughs> this is a hit. Uh, Dorian takes 36 plus 9 damage. Oh god. Oh, Dorian. Ah, this is it. It's the end of the campaign, everybody. Everyone <laughs> <laughs> And his armor is zero. Uh, that was, that took a lot, a lot of his health away. Like a lot of his health. Oh. He's down to 22 health. Oh, God. Okay, that was the ogre's turn. It's Ren's turn. Ren goes, Fucking again? I killed enough of you bastards in the deep roads. He knows his strength. Like, he, he did learn how to be a duelist from Isabella, but that said, he's still better at shooty. Mm. He's better at shooty <laughs> than he is at stabby. He goes ahead and knocks it as a plus 12 to hit. A 22 is, is a hit, yep. Uh, and it's 1d6 plus 3 plus his perception, so 1d6 plus 7. That's minus 11 minus 7, so 4. <laughs> 4 damage. That was Ren's turn. Uh, Herlock 5, with 1 hit point, <laughs> makes a feeble attempt to go, like, that lightning hurt a lot. He's going to go ahead and try to smash Lannon in the face. <laughs> oh, no. Hey. Hey, mister. Not cool. Listen up, Sonny. <laughs> oh, that definitely hits my boyfriend. No, oh, no. He's fine. He's level 20. He can take it. He's okay. fine. Yeah, it's fine. He's fine. 
Worry more about us, maybe. I will not. He has 79 <laughs> health. He's fine. Next up in the order is Lannon. Who, he, he is the shitty healer. He's not the healer that sh- you should have brought to this fight, but he is the healer that you have. <laughs> yep, yep, so yep. he is going to ask who needs healing most. Dorian, Dorian does. <laughs> what about you? What about you, Yariel? You also took a couple nasty hits. I mean... I still have 58 health points. I'm probably fine. 58? Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> I just, like, raise my head very weakly, like, I could use some. I'm at 10. <laughs> okay, oh, he's going to heal you, Cassandra. <laughs> he heals you for nine points of damage. Not a lot. Ooh. But again, this is not the healer that you should have with you right now. Right. <laughs> and also, he is going to uh, whip around and get closer to the tank. So he doesn't have to take another hit like that. <laughs> uh, next up in the order is Dorian. Dorian, oh, Dorian is not feeling great. Uh, no. Dorian, he's going to see if he can kill this last remaining Herlock. Uh, he has to roll TN12 with Drain Life. A 13 is a hit, so he do, he drains 1d6 plus, plus magic. So 1d6 plus 5. He drains 7 hit points from it, which is enough to kill it, and he also gains 7 hit points back. Ooh. Yay. Oh, hey. So that takes care of the Herlock. Sabri, we're back into the top of the order with you. I'm looking, like, horrified. This is not something- I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> uh, it's very big. Okay. Uh, I shout over to Ren. I'm like, you've killed these before. Any tips? Try not to get hit by its giant hands. <laughs> <laughs> Roll my eyes. <laughs> and, uh, I guess I'm just gonna go for a straight run. A 16 is a hit. Okay. <laughs> And three stunt points. Oh, nice. I'm actually just going to do the same lightning attack then, because that just seems to be working well for me. <laughs> All right, go ahead and do that thing that you said. Uh, is that that's damage? Yes. Okay, 12 minus 7. And I'm going to roll with my uh, offhand. Hell yeah. Ooh. A 10 is not a hit. You forgot your plus one again, though, too. Oh, actually, yeah, that's 11 is a, is a hit then. Oh, shit. Thank you. Woohoo! Yeah. yeah. Sweet. All right, the bard, the bard, ladies and gentlemen, Ooh, <laughs> coming 13, in handy. Thirteen minus seven is six. Is there a way as a minor action to try to like get behind it at least or something? Uh, I mean, you can move as a minor action to get behind it, but you also have that stun point where you can move it. Yeah, that's a good point. So here's how I picture this: you lay two nasty hits on it, and then you ram your shoulder forward into the ogre, <laughs> and it goes staggering back several steps, and then it roars at you like you have gotten its attention now. Uh, just for flavor, I roar back at it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yorio, what are you doing? Red in the back like, that's my baby brother! <laughs> <laughs> Born Grey Warden! No, don't join the Grey Wardens. It, it shortens your lifespan, but like, yeah. it's still awesome! <laughs> Cassandra, you are up. Mm-hmm. How far away is it from me? It's now a yard farther away. <laughs> that's good, because I was like, how far should I move at the end? Okay. That also determines, like, which spell I should use, because I have long spells and I have shorter spells, so... Yeah, I'm just gonna leave the melee. I'm gonna just leave it. It's yours now, Yariel. Have fun! Thanks. Have have fun! (laughs) I was like, yay! Go, Yariel! I'm gonna stay back here! (laughs) Let's do Arcane Bolt. A 19 is a hit. This is a contest of dex acrobatics <laughs> of the ogre versus my spell power. <laughs> its dex is one. It has yeah. a one of dex. <laughs> right. I was like, this giant thing, I bet it has great dex. Oh, but a 16 <laughs> shit. you. So it takes half damage or what? Yeah, it takes only 1d6. God damn it. All right, fine. <laughs> All right. Elian, you are up. Oh, dear God. Okay, I have to read up on backstab because I haven't actually done this in a while. Uh, a test of dexterity versus the target's perception seeing. So it's my stealth versus its seeing. A 15 and it needs to do perception, you said? Seeing, yeah. Uh, okay, so that was a narrow victory. Okie dokie. Uh, so this gives me an extra plus two on the attack roll. A 21? That is a- yeah, that's a hit. <laughs> Five stunts. Use lethal blow. Yes, yes, oh my god! yes, yes. <laughs> Woo! Oh, shit. Minus seven, so 13 damage. Still. Yep, still. The veil holds no uncertainty for her. She will know no fear of death, for the maker shall be her beacon and her shield, her foundation and her sword. Uh, the ogre 
does not like being stabbed in the back. Yeah, valid! Uh, it is going to use um, the move charge. Oh no. Uh, so I need you, Sabre, to <laughs> make a dexterity acrobatics test. Okay. Oh, oh, oh no, no. Uh, oh, I'm no, not Sabre. Okay, so that's going to be an ex- that's going to be a lethal blow. Oh great. So that's going to be 3d6 plus 2d6, so 5d6. This might <laughs> This might actually kill me. <laughs> oh god. 25 points of damage. Oh no. He goes charging past you. You get are you are knocked prone since you lost the roll, mm-hmm. and he runs right up to Ren, and then something strange happens. Oh fuck. The ogre makes this f- ferocious eye contact with Ren. It opens its mouth to roar and then stops. And Ren has stopped as well. And you can hear some strange hissing magic coming from around him. Uh-oh. Oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. Oh, no. It is Ren's turn. Ren has to roll willpower self-discipline. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Eleven is not good enough. God damn it. Oh, no! Oh. So here's a fun fact about Ren. He has a, uh... A list of spells that he cannot use unless specifically this happens. Oh. He is going to cast Mass Paralysis. Oh no. Okay. All right. He needs to make a roll with a plus 10 modifier. That is a, that is good enough. Uh, You all need to make a con stamina test. Oh shit. Versus a 20. There's no way. (laughs) I know, right? There's no way. Nope. Nope. Yeah, did anyone God. beat it? Anyone's oh God! Beat this. I don't think we did. No. All right. So he casts mass paralysis, and all of you are suddenly unable to move. And that is where we will end it for today. <laughs> oh, oh fuck, no! Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Oh fuck! <laughs> Hey friends, Tessa here. If you're desperate to hear the next episode, chances are good that you can by joining our Discord server. We post links to all episodes and pre-release, and you can even chat with us and listen live as we record. Join us by going to bit.ly slash cfc discord. For more information on the show, character biographies, and links to social media, head to our website, critfail.club or critfailclub.com. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. Crit Fail Club does not advertise at all, so if you like what you hear, tell a friend who might also like it, make a post on social media about it, or leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Full episodes are available on our YouTube channel, bit.ly slash cfc channel, or wherever you get your podcasts. Mm-hmm.